November 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 5 from the Old Testament. King Belshazzar prepared a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles, and he was drinking wine in front of them all. While under the influence of the wine, Belshazzar issued an order to bring in the gold and silver vessels, the ones that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had confiscated from the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his nobles, together with his wives and his concubines, could drink from them. So they brought the gold and silver vessels that had been confiscated from the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, together with his wives and concubines, drank from them. As they drank wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. At that very moment, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the royal palace wall opposite the lampstand. The king was watching the back of the hand that was writing. Then all the color drained from the king's face and he became alarmed. The joints of his hips gave way and his knees began knocking together. The king called out loudly to summon the astrologers, wise men, and diviners. The king proclaimed to the wise men of Babylon that anyone who could read this inscription and disclose its interpretation would be clothed in purple and have a golden collar placed on his neck and be third ruler in the kingdom. So all the king's wise men came in, but they were unable to read the writing or to make known its interpretation to the king. Then King Belshazzar was very terrified and he was visibly shaken. His nobles were completely dumbfounded. Due to the noise caused by the king and his nobles, the queen mother then entered the banquet room. She said, O king, live forever. Don't be alarmed. Don't be shaken. There is a man in your kingdom who has within him a spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, he proved to have insight, discernment, and wisdom like that of the gods. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, appointed him chief of the magicians, astrologers, wise men, and diviners. Thus there was found in this man Daniel, whom the king renamed Belshazzar, an extraordinary spirit, knowledge, and skill to interpret dreams, solve riddles, and decipher naughty problems. Now summon Daniel, and he will disclose the interpretation. So Daniel was brought in before the king. The king said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives of Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard about you, how there is a spirit of the gods in you, and how you have insight, discernment, and extraordinary wisdom. Now the wise men and astrologers were brought before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they were unable to disclose the interpretation of the message. However, I have heard that you are able to provide interpretations and to decipher naughty problems. Now, if you're able to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, you will wear purple and have a golden collar around your neck and be third ruler in the kingdom. But Daniel replied to the king, Keep your gifts and give your rewards to someone else. However, I will read the writing for the king and make known its interpretation. As for you, O king, the Most High God bestowed on your father Nebuchadnezzar a kingdom greatness, honor, and majesty. Due to the greatness that he bestowed on him, all peoples, nations, and language groups were trembling with fear before him. He killed whom he wished, he spared whom he wished, he exalted whom he wished, and he brought low whom he wished. And when his mind became arrogant and his spirit filled with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and his honor was removed from him. He was driven from human society. His mind was changed to that of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like oxen, and his body became damp with the dew of the sky. Until he came to understand that the Most High God rules over human kingdoms, and he appoints over them whomever he wishes. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, although you knew all this. Instead, you have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven. You brought before you the vessels from his temple, and you and your nobles, together with your wives and concubines, drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, gods that cannot see or hear or comprehend. But you have not glorified the God who has in his control your very breath and all your ways." 
Therefore the palm of a hand was sent from him, and this writing was inscribed. This is the writing that was inscribed. Many, many, tekel and parson. This is the interpretation of the words. As for many, God has numbered your kingdom's days and brought it to an end. As for tekel, you are weighed on the balance and found to be lacking. As for Perez, your kingdom is divided and was given over to the Medes and Persians. Then, on Belshazzar's orders, Daniel was clothed in purple. A golden collar was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed third ruler in the kingdom. And in that very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. So Darius the Mede took control of the kingdom when he was about 62 years old. God, I used to be King Belshazzar. <laughs> Not literally, but before you gave me a new heart and a new way of thinking and loving people, I was him. I was arrogant in the way he was. He wasn't even truly Nebuchadnezzar's son. He just liked to be connected with him. When Daniel was called in, he didn't even give him any sort of respect. He actually arrogantly attempted to put Daniel in his place by referring to him as one of those exile people from Judah. And this doesn't even bother Daniel in the slightest. He doesn't even do the typical normal respectful greeting <laughs> when he's brought into Belshazzar's adulterous feast. So I've been arrogant like Belshazzar was by putting people in their place to try and make myself feel better. Um, especially at the time when I wasn't a Christian. I'm making Christians. Or attempting to make Christians feel bad. About what they believed in. I was horrid. And then. Belshazzar is. Not only living a life. That's not godly for you. God. But he's throwing it up in the face. Of you by using. These things from the temple. Um that are things of worship, that are things set apart, that are things that are holy. And I think back to my Bible that I had, and it was used as a coaster, and it was used to put underneath other things, to get other things raised up on tables. Uh, it collected dust on the bookshelf. I mean, this incredible word of God was sitting in my house all that time, and I was incredibly disrespectful of it. I also think about the people that I was disrespectful to. All these people in my life that I could have helped in their walk with you. That I could have, have shared your word with them. And I was so concerned with my enjoyment, my life, my kingdom. That I had no desire to, to participate in setting them apart, of making them special. Uh, of paying any attention to them unless it gained something for me. And then finally, and probably the worst, is we see Belshazzar, who has seen what Nebuchadnezzar went through. He saw the power that you gave him. He saw him become arrogant with that power, and he saw that you basically destroyed him. You made Nebuchadnezzar go crazy. Uh, and it was you who restored Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom to him. Belshazzar saw all of that and I saw these people around me who especially my sister who had committed her life to you and it was amazing the transformation and what she was able to do and this incredible love she talked about and I wanted nothing to do with it. Here I was just like Belshazzar on the brink of my own death of destroying my own life. And I couldn't even pay attention to the examples you were showing me all around me. Now I am so thankful for the time when you finally said enough is enough and you started taking things away from me and hitting me upside the head with a two by four to get me to pay attention. But in this case, Belshazzar lost his life. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. I only regret my life all the time that I spent on building my own kingdom and not yours, God. I don't want anybody else to have to go through that, if at all possible. And if it's your timing for people to start walking in a relationship with you, and I'm part of that, then please show me what that looks like 
if I'm to sit down with them and talk with them over coffee, provide me the strength, the opportunity, the empowerment, the time to do that. If I am to disciple them, if I am to create a long lasting relationship with them, teaching them what it looks like to walk with you, then provide the structure, provide the education that they're going to need, provide the words that I need to say for what it is that you need that to look like. If somebody just needs prayer or somebody needs to see something on Facebook, God, all I want to be is obedient to you. I spent so much of my life celebrating me and my kingdom. And I can't go back and take any of that away, unfortunately. You did. You forgave me for my stupidity all those years. And you've given me an incredible second chance. And I just don't want anybody else to have those types of regrets. If it is your will that they come in alignment with you, if it's your will that they start walking down that path that you, you created them for, if it's your will and your timing for them to receive that new heart and that new life. And God, if there's anybody listening to this video right now and that's them, and maybe they're in a position where they're not sure if that's them, but they just want to ask questions, or they're ready to be all in, whatever that looks like in any way that we can help them here at Daily Video, God, just let them contact us and we'll be here for them. If to just, with grace, answer questions, pray with them, um, help them walk that, that path for an amazing life spent with you, God. Daniel understood this. He didn't want the gifts offered by Belshazzar, even though they were incredible gifts to receive anything that was purple <laughs> alone at that time uh, was incredibly incred incredibly expensive uh, a golden collar wasn't just the gold itself but it was also a status symbol of how high up you were in in the government and then his place his placement in the government as well and Daniel didn't want any of those things God and I don't want any of those things I don't want anything ever again to build up my kingdom I just want it to be all about you and your kingdom, God. That saying, the many, many Tekel and Parson, means numbered, numbered, weighed, and divided. And I think about my time here on earth and, and how that would apply to our lives as well and what's going to happen in the end of days. That our our acts down here what we thought what we did um, how our heart was they'll be taken into an account and they'll be weighed and then they'll be divided all the things that burn up all the wasteful things of this earth versus all the things that won't burn up on that fire in the end god i want my life to be filled for you with things that will not burn up in that fire. Not because it has anything to do with me, but because it all has to do with you. Allow that humbleness to come into our hearts and to help others to truly love them enough like you loved us, to want what is best for them, and to show them and teach them what our life was before you and be transparent about that and what our life is like with you and be transparent about that. God, I thank you that you are a God of second chances and for your son's death on the cross that allowed me to have that second chance. It's in his name that I pray. Amen.